So I jumped into the massive pile of monsters hoping to survive while making my way out. Oh wait guys, there are a ton of new people coming in. I'll just start from the beginning again to make sure everyone is up to speed. So here it goes, I am the nuclear rabbit, and a few months ago I posted a video where I defeated Diablo 2 with double the monsters as a druid. The commenters were obviously wildly impressed, well except that one, and that one, oh and that one, okay okay I get it. With my ego shattered and my immersion ruined I posted a poll, and because this channel is a safe haven for people to see me suffer, obviously the worst build won the poll. I considered just being like well it's whatever, I completed the druid, but thanks to my pile of self esteem issues I cannot just be happy and move along if I don't do this. It will annoy me till the day I die. So here it is, Diablo 2 with twice the enemies on hardcore with a whirlwind barbarian all the way up to hell. The story starts with me creating a hero and running into the blood more, where I immediately regret everything about this decision tree. Cause dear lord what have I done? The blood more usually has just a few monsters and no boss packs, so seeing multiple boss packs straight off the bat is terrifying. Oh there's also a few champion packs, oh god. The good part about this many monsters is that leveling up is very easy, so I level up a few times and start specking into whirlwind straight away. Wait, what do you mean whirlwind is a level 30 skill, can't I just get it at level 1? No. No I can't. So with the no on that, I need to make a low level build first. I decide to use the tried and true leveling build for the barbarian and start using double swing with maces and the maze mastery. I'll be doing that all the way up to level 30. With another regret under my belt, I make my way to the gold plains, which obviously cannot be worse cause why would it be? I wave at Flavi and run in, only to be greeted by a literal wall of enemies. So I decide to just turn around and cry a bit to Akara. Scepter's other weapon of choice for the early game, dealing a whopping a 6 to 11 damage right from the get go. The barbarian can equip weapons in both hands, so I pick up some javelins as well and start throwing those at the big scary lightning enchanted monsters that I don't want to deal with from up close. My first near death moment comes in the stony fields due to some archers, but you saw the video length so you know I survived. And it's not like it happened 3 times, no, not at all. Any of the current footage playing never happened and was just created for content. In the dark wood it dawns on me how many monsters there actually are when you are doing a double density run. Where the druid just used fire spells and cleared out entire screens at a time, the barbarian run looked more like this. So yeah, this was a bit more grindy than the druid run. You saw the video length, you knew what you were in for. Despite this all being being horrible and terrible and making me regret every decision in my life that I ever made that got me up to this point. Double enemies does mean twice the loot and I'm gonna need it if I'll ever get through this. It starts off with a rare ring that while still very low level has a bunch of stats I want. Damage, attack rating, stamina, lightning resist and magic find are all very welcome. For a first ring this is a great one. I get Kane out of his chastity cage before making my way into the tower to talk to his mistress about how you can just leave your pets behind in a burning village. I mean no king shaming here but please be safe. She disagrees, so I end her existence and pick up the tower room, netting me half of the first of many room which I am going to be making. The next few tower runs have some hiccups, some disagreements and some corpses, but the countess ends up giving us our ath rune so we can make our stealth. Oh, that's an ith rune, not an ath rune, she apparently has dyslexia. So let's run again. Next run I get greeted at the door, netting me the first of many save and exits throughout the run. With me deciding at this point I was done with the tower I got myself a waifu, her name is Ellie and I gave her a nice bow to set the mood before moving into the barracks. Where there are so many monsters that I'm actually having a hard time killing them fast enough to keep up with the shamans Diablo 2 resurrecting them. One horrible pun later I attack the shamans themselves, finally stopping the loop and taking them all down and allowing me to move on. I pranked the smith by waiting around at the door opening and promptly killing him while shouting it's just a prank bro. A hammer also randomly appeared on the ground and well, finders keepers. Act 1 finishes up in the catacombs level 4 where I decide to do some proper research on the effect of combat shrines on combat and get rewarded for my trouble by finally finding an armor. It's a grey form, netting me life leech dexterity and resistances to cold and fire. This also seems like a good time to talk about what the number means and why it's there. I used a mod to double the number of enemies in the game. It has a ton of really cool options, with one of them being the ability to show item levels on items, which is a very nice quality of life upgrade to the game, because there are numerous instances that I'll mention throughout the run where the item level is very relevant. Starting off Act 2, we are making our way towards Rudamont, one skeleton at a time. And with this much walking around going on, I'm also happy to pick up some boots. And with my feet safe from Miyazaki, 
I go ahead and high five Radamant in the face. I decide that it is time for me and Ellie to see other people, so I go on a blind date with Azrael. For our first date, we are going on a nice walk through the desert, passing by Jassi for a nice imbue before moving along into the halls of the dead, where Azrael ends up finding my old girlfriend's clothes. However, I quickly tell him that it's a sexy gift, so he ends up putting it on. I pick up the cube and almost move along before spotting a fanged helm on the ground. Plus three maze mastery, don't mind if I do. Same goes for another rare ring that turns out to be a very welcome find for such a low level ring. Damage, attack rating, cold resist and most importantly half freeze duration cause even though it isn't as good as cannot be frozen for obvious reasons it's also not even close to as rare. The items continue on with a helmet with plus 3 polar mastery and plus 3 fine potion. That will be good later on in the run because yes for a change I actually planned out the run before starting. I usually just run in head first until every wall breaks but even I wasn't that stupid on this one. Having multiple plus 3 skills that I want to use surely this will be my end game helmet and I will never find anything better ever again ever no way ever and yes that is foreshadowing i pick up the amulet and store my reduce before making my way into the maggot lair slashing my way through one at a time and everything is going nicely until i encounter my first physical immune seriously game in act 2 normal why does this game hate me luckily i have some chip gems in my weapons so i can take it down but why what why to reinforce my manliness i decide to clear <coughs> to reinforce my manliness i decide to clear out the rest of the bugs during which i find a set belt and pick up the staff the set belt is a hasaris belt an excellent early game belt that you could easily use even on high level characters like the list of runs to do isn't big enough yet it's currently sitting at over 300 requested runs i have a problem please send help oh well azrael quickly shatters under the pressures of the harem in the arcane sanctuary everything lines up nicely to get beaten to a pulp one by one which is nice cause it's really busy there. So no problems here except for the spectres meaning I once again have to go ahead and do a nice little save and quit. I make my way past the summoner and decide that my weapons need some upgrading. So I go ahead and buy a flail to make a steel rune word and buy a second one to just jam some gems into to get some damage going. And before you comment, yes I know tall runes deal more damage, if I had any I would use them. One staff insertion later and I am in the Duriel fight. Duriel is one of the hardest fights in the game, he on his own has been gate keeping people away from act 3 for decades, however because of all the extra enemies I had to go through I am at a much higher level than I usually Am. So I can just walk up to him and open the gate to act 3. In act 3 I find myself a jade figurine before forcefully being confronted with my arachnophobia. I get through it and pick up Kaleem's eye. And the git bin. In the flayer dungeon I find my second physical immune. Luckily this time I can just use the damage from the rail runes in my flail to easily take it down. I pick up the brain and my reward for returning the kit bin and follow it up by returning said reward immediately because it's trash. My skills keep going as I go ahead and grab Leem Essence Tomb and Kaleem's heart. At this point I've picked up so much of Kaleem that Azrael is starting to feel jealous. Which I am promptly going to ignore cause like a real man I can't communicate about my feelings. One console fight later I pick up the flail, put Kaleem back together again and wave goodbye to a weapon I would love to use. Moving along into the Durants of Hate, I am greeted by everyone's favorite dolls. I clear them and because this is still a double density run, it just straight happens again. And I encountered a third pack of them on level 3, which is pretty rare so I figured I'd mention it. Still wildly over leveled, I go ahead and explain to Mephisto that I'm right on time, especially with equipping my magic finding boots. Azrael ends up taking a dive before I get in the final hit, getting rewarded with a unique in the form of Mephisto's soulstone. But that's a quest I- oh, that drops always? Oh. Well screw you then Mephisto. I find a Thor rune in the outer steps and follow it up by finding a teleport staff that I promptly sell to Jamela because I still don't like the gameplay teleport staffs create. I say a very long and thorough hello to Israel. Seriously, why does this guy have this much HP. One arduous boss fight later I go and say hello to a hot young man with a big hammer named Hephaestus as well. 
quickly taking him down before Azrael sees. I go ahead and play Smash or Pass again, this time with the Hell Forge. You can give so many runes I can use. Am runes, Orth runes, Shale runes, Soul runes, I would love all of them. So let's see what I get. It's an L rune. God, stupid <laughs> Forge. In the River of Flame, I reach level 30, which means I finally get to use the build that won the poll. So I go ahead and talk to Akara to get my Reese back on. I get a whopping 113 strength, a bunch of vitality and start getting points into dexterity. Why, do you ask? Well, that's because the weapon I plan on using for Nightmare is a partisan, which requires a ton of stats and I want to be prepared for it. I put a point in all of the things you can't do without, like faster stamina, more run walk speed, iron skin and natural resistances. Next up, the war cries. I start by putting a point into battle command and make battle orders go as high as it can for now. My physical immune problems will no longer exist as at level 30 you gain access to berserk. I gladly spec into that as well. I also get leap and leap attack as they are prerequisites for whirlwind and finally get into the honorary skill of the run as well. So what does whirlwind do? Well it spins you around like a whirlwind and it deals damage. I know it's very complicated but that is what it does. The rest of the points go into the mastery. And now for a weapon. Let's queue it up and hope we get a good one. And holy hell do we get a beauty. A great damage roll, perfect max damage and 30 increased attack speed to boot. This will do nicely until I get into the big boy weapons. I start whirlwinding around the chaos sanctuary. The damage is good, but I'm immediately reminded that I can't heal during whirlwinding. Oh well, nothing to be done about that, so let's move along. I ring the doorbell, kill whoever opens up. I make my way towards Diablo, and at this point I am at such a high level that even Azrael is just able to face tank his attacks. Not for long though, I think Azrael and me are starting to have some personal differences at this point, but besides that, a few spins later Diablo goes down. In the rewards he drops, I end up getting a Saigon's belt, which while being the fire version of my Osaurus belt stat wise, has a much higher potential with the combo for Saigon's pieces. I spin my way along the bloody foothills, picking up an M rune along the way. My goal however, lies beyond the bloody foothills and I make my way into the frigid highlands where I end up finding a unique kite shield which is a good mercenary shield and with that I decide to end my fling with Azrael as I lock eyes on Jabari, his fireballs and his enchant spell granting me access to fire damage and enchant, I quickly go and pick up a sword for him. On our little adventure through sanctuary we decide to teach the barbarians how doors work. In the crystalline passage I run into a group of frustrated moon lords. I quickly explain to them where the secret cow level is and pick up a shale rune as a reward. In hell your resistances get lowered by 100%, starting you off at minus 100 resist, so I make no excuses and head into the frozen river to save Anya, because the quest to save her gives 10% resist all as a reward. I break the ice with Anya, get my resistances and ask for a refund on the helmet she gives me. One thing that made me very happy is that the Ancient Way was not a warning of things yet to come, because they got way, 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 way worse. Being very high level comes with the advantage of making mincemeat of the Ancients in short order, which is exactly what I do. In the World Sun Keep, I encounter a worryingly amount of enemies, not gonna lie, at this point I'm terrified of the higher difficulties, but I've gotta clear this one out first. So I run around a bit more, clear out the bale waves, and since I'm still way over leveled, I make quick work out of bale. It's what I would have said, but I'm just not able to get past this one group of stupid moon lots on level 3. So at this point I'm over leveled, geared pretty well for normal, and still getting my ass kicked. A feeling of dread claws at my chest, I don't know why, I decide to ignore the feeling because I am a real man and I try to get into the next difficulty again. Cause well, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, getting cursed and having to save an exit, yes, that could very much be a thing that goes wrong. So overleveled, underpowered, oh god. I run back through the ancient's way and the world's don't keep, this time deciding to grab the checkpoint along the way. The Throne of Destruction greets me with some more angry bulls and I go ahead and send them on their way to the cow level again, never to be heard of ever again. I make my way through the Bale Wave and insert all sorts of tentacle jokes around Bale, and with this death, normal is cleared, so that's good, the easy part is done. If only it was actually easy, I can't imagine what is waiting for me in the higher difficulties. So without further ado, let's head into Nightmare. 
Nightmare gets off to a good start. I find a unique giant axe, which is the humongous, a name that is no exaggeration. I mean, just look at that thing. The blade alone is the size of my torso. Gripping the handle with two hands feels strangely familiar though, if you know what I mean. A saw rune drops as well, which is perfect because the weapon I'm going for in Nightmare needs one of those. I head into the underground tower, because that's how towers work, not like it's just a very deep basement or anything, where I end up finding a Saigon's armor, which I wear together with the belt for 10% life leech. Running into a giant pile of fallens, I end up almost dying, but I'm rewarded with a 4 socket volt. Not the base I'm looking for, but it's a start I suppose. Nothing ever gets close in this so called tower while I kill the counters a few times. So for now I go ahead and make my insight into the vulge I found, which grants me the meditation aura, netting me a ton of mana regeneration. So of course, having just spent the runes, the very next run I find a 4 socket partisan, cause you know, this game is just an asshole like that. However, that is the base I specced for all along, so I turn it into another insight. I get rewarded hard for continuing the tower run, a pair of Saigon's boots drops to the ground, netting me my third Saigon's piece, which grants me 50% magic find and some attack rating on top of all the other set bonuses. Wanting to improve my amulet cause, well, it's ass. I decide to try and craft for something better, but my luck continues and instead of crafting it, I just gamble an amazing amulet, netting me plus two to war cries and a pile of resists. With me getting all those new fancy things, I decide to give Jabara a rhyme as well to shut him up. And in the true spirit of the game, it's followed up by straight up finding a much better shield immediately. Oh, I also made a lore and a spirit for him. The rest of Nightmare was pretty much just a bin that done that kind of thing, so here's the highlight. I find a Lum rune during the Radamant quest. The map in the Tar Rush's tomb was the greatest map I have ever seen. I show the laws of physics where they can shove it in the Freya dungeon. Go rune drops in Lower Kuras. I get chased by the entire Chucky franchise in the Durans of Hate, once again making me realize why it is called the Durans of Hate. It's cause I still fucking hate this place. After escaping the dolls I find the waypoint and I end up cheesing my map to Mephisto. I wave hello to some demons on my way to Israel. I jump a river. I get a foul room from the Hellforge. I do a save and exit in the Chaos Sanctuary. I kill Diablo. I kill Shank. I upgrade Jabari's shield. I almost died trying to escape in the crystalline passage because battle orders ran out at the worst possible time. I go ahead and cry about what I find and sell to the vendors while playing a mod. Seriously, selling that hurt almost as much as this entire run. It is the perfect staff for an energy shield blizzard sorceress. I hawk a pile of potions. I find a couple of amazing charms. I reduce the stress on the healthcare system by getting rid of some old people. I decide to go the other way in the world stone keep. I kill Bill and he drops a Tall Rusher's helmet. With its resistances, life and mana leech, it is one of the best melee helms in the game. I seriously do not get why this is a helm for a sorceress set. It is amazing on every single goddamn character but a sorceress. It's still okay on a sorceress though, but it's so much better on the others. And after that explanation of why a Tall Rusher's helmet is good, I can make sure and foreshadow that it's obviously the latest helm we are going to find. Nothing will ever beat this. Surely there aren't any better helms. Wait, foreshadowing? No, never heard of it. I play Bullet Hell in the Frozen River. I save Anya. I claim my reward. I head into the terror zones, I find the best crossbow in the game, and as a result I agonize thinking about how I could have been a fury wolf or a boazon or anything else. But not gonna lie though, I was thinking all of those things before I even started this run. I enjoy a nice little casual Ontario terror zone for some loot. I laugh at people looking for defensive skillers. 
I find another amazing bow and think about how much I miss Ellie. I realize I am rich and can just buy her love and then shower her in gifts. I regret going to the world zone keep level 2. I move to the next arrow zone. Find the Monod. Find the Shaco. Wait, what? So yeah, I ended up finding a Shaco in the Flare jungle. For those of you not in the know, Shaco is one of the most iconic and best helmets in the game. With its plus 2 skills, piles of life and mana, damage reduction and magic find, almost every single endgame build wants a Shaco. So finding one is a treat. And the obedience rune word was at the top of my choices during planning this. Obedience is an amazing rune word. It is my go to mercenary weapon of choice for melee characters. And for good reason, this weapon has it all and charm triggers to get more attack rating, some fire damage, faster hit recovery, 300 170 enhanced damage, yes not 37, 370. Some gold damage for crowd control, a pile of stats, a whopping 30 resist all, and last but certainly not least, the star of this entire show. Yes, I shit you not, this weapon has 40% crushing blow. For the low low cost of a Go and a Fel rune, you get to outperform almost every single two handed weapon in the entire game, starting at level 41, it's absolutely ridiculous. I need to mention one thing though. Will Whirlwind itself won't trigger the enchant, it just doesn't. Probably a remnant from Classic when Whirlwind was still the best skill in the game, hitting every single frame. Oh dear lord, I just realized, I should have done this run in Classic, it would have been so much better. Can we restart? No harm no fall, right? No, you all want to see me suffer in the expansion? <sighs> Okay then, let's get into hell. Not gonna lie, I'm not looking forward to this. We really can just call it here, I won't tell if you won't. Still no? Uh, okay then, I was just asking. Time for hell, let's see what we are working with. My base damage is low, not even hitting 2k at max, but my life pool is pretty big, especially with battle orders and my resists are amazing. The Den of Evil is the first place my new life with Ellie brings us and I end up getting so sick of being out of mana all the time that I actually end up giving her the Shaco and take the Tar Rushers mask back from the stash for its 10% mana leech. With my mana problem sorted once again I go ahead and pack it up, pack it in and begin cause I got the feeling to try and hit the ceiling cause I came to get down, get around and jump all around to get to Andario. I make short work of her using the mighty overpowered obedience rune word and head into act 2. The maggot lair isn't too bad, I can spin straight through things to make my way, a few physical immune slow me down a bit and despite things getting pretty busy with it, nothing down here got too bad. I also switched back to the Shaco, not for a really good reason I just wanted to use my Shaco, can you blame me? It honestly probably was just better to use the Tal Mask, it, the build played a lot better with the Tal Mask, but I found a Shaco and I wanted to use it. Despite almost world winning into a giant pile of fanaticism and monsters, I survived to find a unique rondel, which is a hardcover, granting me plus 4 find potion on switch. A very welcome addition to my setup, cause I would be long gone at this point without the infinite full rejuvenation potions find potion is providing me with. It will also serve as an amazing weapon if I didn't already have an obedience, with it being the miniest of griefs and all. I mean seriously, this thing has kind of it all when you look at it. And after all of that, I managed to find my P- uh, the Staff of Kings. Finding the amulet was easy, so now it's time for the Arcane Sanctuary. And I don't even know what to say here that could encompass what happened here. Like a lot of hell was just me being in moments I do not know how to describe in a way that comes close to my suffering. So here you go, just enjoy the music and watch me suffer. Having cleared the arcane sanctuary, well barely, the pain didn't stop as it's followed up by a nice little save and exit at the Tal Rusher's tomb. I decide on a new strategy of just running and jumping around in this house of pain, saving and exiting once I reach a dead end.
finally finding the orifice, I reset the game one more time. Clear my way to it the only honest way I know how, by creating a giant pile of corpses. And with all of the murder getting me very, very excited in a strange way, I put my staff in the hole. A few spins later, Duriol evolves into Eat Dirt Riol, and Act 2 is done. Whoa, three more to go. We've got this. Before starting my Jaws of the Jungle style adventure, I remember that I still have a socket quest left to use. So I let Lazak have his way with my Shaco and because I have all the gear I need, have plenty of life and all my stats and resists are taken care of, I decide to put a diamond into the Shaco for some more attack rating. Act 3 starts off with finding a 3 socket dusk shot. I use it to make a piece. This room would grant you the chance to spawn a Valkyrie and an additional tank can't hurt. I pick up the jade figurine and take some bottles of fluid from some spiders before picking up Kaleem's eye again. The thorned hogs almost beat the crap out of me as I don't get a chance to dive into my town portal. Luckily I end up escaping by leap attacking away from them. And with the power of love, hydras, a massive amount of crushing blow and fire arrows, but mostly the power of love and the crushing blow, we give the thorned hogs their comeuppance. And no, it wasn't close at all, don't look at the screen. Or my life total. Or my health bar. Moving along, I walk into the Great Marsh and start hoping for a map that connects the spider force directly to the Flayer jungle, as I turn around and ignore whatever going on in the marsh, cause it's definitely not great at all. My flayers are answered and I spin into that jungle without ever having to set foot in the marsh again. In there, I kill a rat man for the kid bin and easily spin my way through the flayer dungeon. Because, as the upcoming footage will show you, it wasn't hard at all, nope, nothing tedious going on in there at all. Having told the laws of physics to go suck it, I retrieve the brain. At this point I am very sick of the jungle, so I just casually spin through the rest of it. With the stories of my suffering reaching the ruined temple before I physically do, I am greeted at the door by fans, whom I quickly tell I don't want to give out autographs to people that aren't subscribed to my channel, and quickly grab the tome and get out. I put the extra points in dexterity, netting me one short of perfect chance to hit, before making my way to the Travancore waypoint. The council challenges me to a shootout with Hydras, which I cheese by just whirling their faces off. With them being all of the dead, I go ahead and smash the orb, terrified of what will come next. The Durance of Hate is exactly what I expected it to be. With that amount of dolls, I am just down to being a pacifist, because if I press the spin to win button here, I will be dead. I make my way to level 2, which I'm sure will be better. Well, nope, not better at all. This is all horrible as well, so I do what anyone should do and get out as quickly as I can. Mephisto is joined by a bunch of vampires, but compared to the giant piles of garbage I've been going through so far, this was child play. I switch into my magic find gear for the final hit and Mephisto goes down, dropping me absolutely fucking nothing of course. What else did you expect? 13 down, 2 left. Let's go. Right away at the door I discover there are only two ways to beat Act 4. At this point my damage is lackluster at best and I am not over leveled for anything anymore. So after almost getting my ass kicked right at the door, I think to myself, fuck it, and start jumping all the way up to the demon's gate. In the Chaos Sanctuary, I need a place to work from, so I start clearing out the pentagram. But as I am spinning around, more and more demons are being lured toward my altar of sacrifice, all wanting me to be the slainee and not the slayer, while trying to convince the monsters that despite them living here and me just being a guest, I would like some solitude in their house of doom. I run in an omega circle. With the mass of that candle of jokes having run out, I have to admit that the demons might have a point, as they surround me and I have to admit defeat, so I save an exit. In the next game, I decided that the Chaos Sanctuary was a problem for future me, and now me would like to get some high runes. So I start slashing away towards the Hellforge, only to decide after a few spins that I should probably just jump. The enemies all naturally funneled into a line while I stood in a corner, allowing for me and Ellie to take all of them on one at a time, resulting in me clearing all of it and safely getting to the reward the Hellforge has in store for me. I don't want to talk about how hard Hefasto hits or about how many things are there when I'm trying to swing the hammer. A 
I get a Mal rune as the reward for my trouble. So with no excuses left, I start making my way towards the Chaos Sanctuary once again. Seeing as how I can't start clearing out a nice spot in the middle of the Chaos Sanctuary, because I'll just get overwhelmed again, I have to start at, well, the start. Which means I am going to have to go through all of this, one monster at a time, all the way up to Diablo. And well, let's cue the music again, because I am running out of ways to say I walked up, swung at something, will win it, and everything died. As the music draws to a close, and after three fucking hours in the Chaos Sanctuary, my misery is over and Diablo goes down. The nightmare is almost over. Time for the final act, where something in my mind finally broke. This run started out as me wanting to prove to commanders that I could do it. That I had it in me to beat every run they could throw at me. That I could be the greatest hardcore player alive, as I had always believed I had been, until they came along. The request to always go harder, extremer and endure even more suffering was like a demon in my head. The intensity of my runs was becoming maddening. In this challenge, even a basic magic finding run became a desperate struggle for survival. Even the simplest areas required every ounce of willpower I had. I wasn't sure how long I could sustain the effort without seeing the deeds of Valor screen. It seemed like the only thing holding my run together was my one desire. To be better than everyone else thought. At times I thought I was losing my mind, would it ever be enough? It didn't make sense, it was infuriating and it was my fury that kept me alive. While piles of monsters kept coming at me non-stop, I welcomed them. It seemed fitting, like it was an outward manifestation of the storm raging inside of me. Then the auras started coming down. But I was determined to fight through them all. It was my only way out, my only way to survive. I thought I had it all under control, but then the mother of all monster combos appeared out of nowhere, threatening my run and my life. Normally it would have been child's play to get through this, but after 30 hours of this, it took everything I had and more. Then something just snapped, something inside of me, no more, I don't care anymore. I didn't care anymore about proving myself. I didn't care about making it all look good on camera. I didn't care if I lived. I didn't care about anything anymore. And then, it happened. Yes, that's how it happened. That's how I beat Diablo 2 with double the monsters on hardcore as a whirlwind barbarian and became a guardian. <laughs>